Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today, we'll be looking at uh, Killswitch, who sent this one in. Thanks a lot for that. And he'll be out in his Tirpitz, the Tier 8 premium Ger German battleship, the sister of the Bismarck. And, by incidence, one of my favorite ships. So, he's platooned up in a little bit of a failed platoon, because a uh, gecko guy there in the Colorado comes in a Tier 7 into a Tier 9 game. <laughs> This is why you generally want to match up your tiers. And uh, there is LZ4MW in the Admiral Hipper as the third. If you don't know him, he's uh, having his own YouTube channel uh, called The Blitz. And I can thoroughly recommend watching what he's doing because he's I think he's, his videos are great. So I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. But uh, this one's about Killswitch, who's been sending that in. So what are they facing? They are in a tier 9 game, they're facing uh, an Essex on the enemy team, uh, an Izu 1, 2, 3, 4 tier 9 battleships, a Neptune and a Seattle, at least no destroyers, so that's good. The Seattle and the Neptune you can probably deal with, especially the Neptune. These two are teamed up as well, but um, the battleships are going to get interesting, so let's go and see how this is going to play out. They're playing Encounter, obviously, which is one of the standard maps at this tier. And um, it has some interesting aspects usually to it, because it very much depends on which flank, especially with carriers out and scouting capabilities, which flank they're going. So uh, him and LZ are planning uh, are spawning in, uh, in the cap, and the Colorado spawns on the right flank. So... Bottom tier 7 battleship in a tier 9 map, <laughs> he's probably going to get targeted relatively quickly. So Killswitch fires up the engines in the turpits and starts heading out pretty much towards the right flank. Now you kind of, it kind of depends here which way you're going. Um, it depends on which, uh, which flank the enemy is attacking from. Now the enemy carrier sends his fighters in and this is just to scout. So the enemy carrier scouts their disposition completely. He sees that the Fletcher on their team is heading over to that island and taking up a defensive position, which given that, um, well, if there's only battleships coming that way, he can manage, as long as the Neptune and the Seattle aren't coming along. Everybody else is pushing extremely hard on the right, uh, on the right flank, and the carrier on their team is taking an, uh, is taking an, uh, an advanced positioning here as well. But uh, they haven't really scouted all that much, so that's a huge risk they're taking here, going all that side. And uh, there he spots a Seattle. I would have used the precise aiming at this distance because the German battleships are not the most precise things out there. But oh, he gets four decent hits in. So that's a good start. Now the carrier starts scouting and finally we see that there are two enemy battleships on the right flank. Now if these guys are going to push um, on that right flank then they're going to be in huge trouble. Because uh, the Fletcher is not going to be able to hold both of them back. And there's one of the cruisers battle back there as well. But it looks like the enemy team is playing defensive. So um, the enemy's flank towards the southeast here is going to be relatively ineffective, which means that they have one, two, three, four ships against the Iowa over here standing on her own and the Alsace. Now the Iowa is a good ship, but if you broadside like that against it, even the Turpitz's 380 mils can do damage. And um, uh, well, yes, the Colorado has basically YOLO'd at this point, being a bottom tier battleship, broadsiding everyone and coming under sustained carrier attack. There come the Hipper's Torps, and um, uh, Killswitch actually gets the kill on the Iowa, but the Colorado is doomed, and he probably knows it. So LZ is, is returning, and um, oh, these, these Hipper Torps were just short. Uh, now, the, now here's the Alsace. Now the Alsace is shooting at someone else, probably at the cruisers, which means he has free reign. And yep, French battleship. Ouch, that hurt. Now he's almost in secondary range. With the turpits, you want to get close. There come some airdrop torpedoes, but they're not going to have range. Now he drops torpedoes here, probably just in case the Alsace decides to turn in, so he would run into them, because he's still out of range. But now he can get the primaries and the secondaries to fire. There's the next citadel. And the auto secondaries should open up any second now. Ah, no need. Um, LZ takes out the Azaz and have, they have cleared up this flank completely and the enemy still hasn't pushed on the other side the only thing that was defending back there was a Fletcher he's still sitting behind that island <laughs> defending that flag now if they've got two cruisers over here I think it's a it's an Ibuki a Japanese cruiser and um, LZ in the Hipper none of them is particularly well equipped in terms of AA but uh, 
Uh, Killswitch still has his has his full health. Now, there's the Neptune. And, oh, he should have locked this one on. That would have been probably... That and, and the precise aiming would have been a lot more devastating because I think he missed those. Now, he's got two fires burning. And there come the airdrop torpedoes. Is he going for him? No, he seems to be going for the Ibuki or is making up his mind. Now he goes for him after all, so he's gonna have to dodge. And he gets very lucky not to get a flood here. I'd, po I'd have popped that repair kit as well by now. Uh, there he goes, good job. Now he has a problem, he's committed. Uh, LZ's heading back because the enemies finally decided that yes, they can actually push. But now the Fletcher takes out the Izumo on the other flank and they're running out. There's just a Neptune in the middle and LZ's in a hipper. Even that's a tier 9 the British destroyer, it's not gonna live very long. Uh, because the hippers can, hipper can clean her up pretty quickly. Now he has got an Essex and I think the Seattle to deal with and that's a problem. He probably wants to figure to yeah it's, it's a case of carrier sickness. You see a carrier you're like oh yeah carrier I need to kill this guy. Um, carriers are, especially top tier carriers are surprisingly sturdy beasts and uh, Seattle is an HE spammer so now he used, he used his damage control he's down to about half health and there's no way he's gonna kill the Essex because the Essex is gonna back up. Uh, you can't easily citadel these things as well. They are really well protected actually and uh, That Seattle is now unloading a barrage of high explosive onto him trying to burn him down And I'm not sure what the Ibuki is doing. He seems to be just hiding on the other side uh, I mean, yes, he is in a Japanese cruiser. No, he's he's actually got fire on the Seattle So see if you've got an enemy. Yeah, now he's got three fires burning. He's he's doomed if you've got an enemy ship um, fi being focused by your team player, just try to kind of get that one as well. But um, that's all right. He gets one more salvo off at the Essex, maybe with a Citadel. Uh, no, nope. uh, that the Seattle burns him down eventually. But uh, in the meantime, LZ and the Fletcher back there, together with the Essex, have cleaned up whatever was remaining of the enemy team that decided to push, which is great because um, with his, uh, even even though he's been sunk, and you could say like, well, why did he do that? Well, because he pulled um, a Seattle and uh, the enemy Essex completely out of the game, which allowed the rest of his team to clean up around and, and de defeat that push that was coming in. And now they're leading in points because they're a ship ahead. And all that Ibuki has to do is, is survive for the next 10 seconds. And I think even with the concentrated firepower of a Seattle and an Essex, he can manage that. Because the Neptune, look at the Neptune, the Neptune's actually returning. The Neptune is returning. He didn't push. He didn't support the push to the the enemy base. So there we go. The match ended, and Killswitch gets the MVP, and I think deservedly so, because again, you could say, well, he he just yoloed at the end, and well, he was committed. There was no way he was going to get out of there alive, but he tied up three ships basically, and allowed the rest of his team members to to defend their uh, to defend the completely delayed enemy push. And um, that was a high-risk, high-stakes thing, but they managed to pull it off. And well done also to LZ in the Hipper with, uh, with a tier 7 battleship in the team. They still managed to pull this win off. It's not always about the sheer numbers of damage. Right? You, you, oftentimes you can use the health of your battleship to just go in and bind the enemy team and hold them down and... and if you can manage to hold more ships than yourself, so if you can manage to hold two or even three ships by yourself down, that is a huge advantage for your team to defeat the enemy in detail. So very well done everybody and uh, thanks Killswitch for sending that one in. Great battle in one of my favorite ships. That's it for today. Thanks everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.